Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm just um, redoing this video. I, I finally figured out how to get the mic working. So I got two computers, and I was launching Screen Recorder from this cloud computer. That's why it was uh, not catching my microphone. So I had to launch it from my actual computer. So that's where I'm at um, right now. And I want to show you guys the VR mics that I covered in the other video. So on my browser, I actually have a folder up here um, that I, to help keep everything organized. And this is just what I have managed to compile over the last three months for me personally but as far as these category categories are concerned they i find them to be pretty universal for whichever minds that you end up picking down the line but i want to start off first by saying that um what i found to be the most most useful is creating um a, a backup folder like a skyrim vr backup folder let's see i don't know why i can't see any of these but let me let me see. Go straight to the desktop. Oh, here you go. So the reason why I create this is because when you when your game crashes or if you have any issues and you just get to the point where you just feel like you just like say F it and I want to just start all over, start from scratch, then it is really helpful to already have the um, zip files downloaded already rather than deleting them, and um and then having like your your tweaks like for example. When one mod called Sprint Jump VR, um, I have certain tweaks in the any files, the con configuration files to to make it feel more realistic, like in real life. But with their default settings, you like you jump like really far out and really high up, and you actually float in the air for like is is weird. So I have to adjust those settings. But when I when I when I reinstall it and I you know I wipe everything from my computer and I reinstall it. I tend to have to try to figure out what my settings were. So what I've just done is I've just saved a copy of this and, and leave it in my Skyrim VR backup folder. And I just go through this real quick, like Belago tools. This is a a, a massive any configuration tool. Like um, it, it handles all the any files in Skyrim. And and if you don't know what that is, it's basically like the in your My Documents under My Games, and then you click on Skyrim. You'll see where it says uh, Skyrim Preference and or any file. That's where you can tweak stuff like the interact the interactive box text, um, make it smaller or bigger, or you can you can do a lot of stuff in the any files like uh, tweak the the TAA shaders, the temporary alias, whatever that is something. You can do a lot of stuff in there, a, a lot of stuff. And um, another thing that I, I I need is contrast of adaptive sharpening. My my preferred EMB shaders, um, engine fixes. This fixes a lot of crashes. In, in um in Skyrim, I forgot what this is. My my preferred any settings. So this is basically what it looks like when you go in your my documents. Like if you click on this, click on my oh, hold on, click on my games and click on Skyrim. You'll see it in here. But when I delete everything, I have to go back in and then tweak all this stuff again. So it's it really is helpful to have a backup folder. So that's what I do in as far as the, the any settings is concerned. Then I also have the mods individual settings like locational damage, um, Higgs VR. That's the um, Higgs is basically making the objects in the environment interactable. And there's certain tweaks in there that like uh, let's see like there's one that I know off the top of my head that adds an extra le a level of immersion. I think it's called force something. Let's see. Uh, yeah, force physics grab. This makes all held objects use a velocity-based movement. Basically, like when you when you place a cup on the table, it actually like stop on the table rather than going through it, you know. And but I I, for, I would forget that if I had to reinstall, you know, I had to go back and try to figure that out and backtrack what what I did. And uh, I got a lot of other stuff in here, just like like this is this is essentially like the script extender, the sky UI. Um, this is to basically clean the mods and 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 um clean dirty plugins and it goes hand in hand with your mod manager um and then the, the skyrim special edition pass this is all stuff that you have to download not all of it but specifically this sky ui script extender and um what i've noticed i just keep all of this stuff in here because with when it, com when it comes to each mod they have their own settings that you you'll find you might want to tweak as you play and it, that just comes in handy and I, as far as mod managers is concerned, right now I have 57 active mods. I just downloaded some new mods, but I have a golden rule, at least for me personally. Um, this might be different for other people, but 
mid playthrough, if I if I'm if I have a playthrough, I just won't like install or uninstall a mod um unless I'm willing to start a brand new game. So like my my rule is my rule of thumb is if I'm make sure I have absolutely everything I want, absolutely everything I want downloaded as far as mods are concerned before I start a new game. Because if you try to if you try if you uninstall a mod mid playthrough and then you try to load that save, then the the game is going to crash because it's it's trying to load something that isn't there. So they say they say to to load a save prior to when you install that mod. But in my case, I start all this stuff you know before starting a game. So that's kind of my rule of thumb. But generally, it's really only when you uninstall mods. But I've been so paranoid that I, I don't even add mods. I just don't touch nothing mid playthrough. But uh, you know. So I want to go through these mods, but what I wanted to show you is this um, folder here that I have on my browser. It also makes access to these individual mods more easier. So these are the ones I just added because I, I just beat the game, so I, I feel comfortable now, you know, messing around with it. But like Skyrim Trading Post Remastered, this is one I totally forgot about, but it adds trading posts around Skyrim, like around the villages, where you can just buy and sell and, and trade and stuff like that. And there, it's it's really it's really cool. To have in the game, you know, just to, to walk near a village and, and see a trading post. This is pretty awesome. And then, um, so let me just break this down. So these these next four is realistic mining. It makes mining realistic. Marry me, Serena. Definitely want to get married with Serena. It just basically adds her as a a, a marriable option to the vanilla um marry marriable marriageable. Where that word is, marry piece NPCs option in a vanilla game. Chill when deaths has a lot, um, crashes for certain people, so that, that's, um, a convenient mod to have. Chill when deaths, um, crash the desktop fix. Chill when deaths has a lot of herbs and necessary ingredients that you can get for alchemy. So, but for some reason, crashes a lot there, so that mod actually fixes it. And, alright, so let's go down the list. Now, I, I included this, uh, compendium in the, uh, the group. It's a very helpful, I found this to be, um, just really, really helpful and, and kind of, Surprised I found out about this at the last minute because I spent like a month and a half, almost two months up to this finding this, just dealing with, like pulling my hair out. So this has everything, absolutely everything you need, like the facts, um, um, VR specific mods, game settings, a super sample. I mean, anything you could think of, like, um, how to get started for beginners. And they have different types of guides. So you can just click on any one of these and you'll have different guides. Um, the necessary, any tweaks that I was talking about earlier. Modding guys, with you got a, like a, a low computer or or a big a a, a high end computer, you can use these big big modding guys. Wabajack is like a mod pack, and they have different options depending on uh, what you what you're looking for. But they have mods all in one, so you don't have to do them individually. The only problem I have with those is the same thing. It's kind of that rule of thumb I was talking about earlier. If you change anything, then the whole thing, th those those mod packs are optimized for those individual mods. So if you add anything or take anything away, it it'll ruin it. It'll crash. Just from my my experience. And um, so yeah, you guys definitely are gonna find this helpful, especially this particular section. See, uh, crash to desktop and troubleshooting. Really, really um helpful guys in here just um to help you troubleshoot your your crash desktop because a lot of times it's just a memory issue or it's just incompatibilities in between mods and that's that's something i want to talk about is if you have a mod uh, i want to talk about load order i'm i'm not the best at explaining it i have a general understanding of it of it but basically you want to have like the the files that are the most demanding the biggest files to be up top and they and they'll naturally do this and then the ones that don't require as much at the bottom. And then a, uh, a great way to kind of manage this is through a program called Loot. So let me go ahead and open this and show you what this. It actually sorts your load order for you. And I just added some new mods, so it's probably going to show me some stuff I, I got to do. But up here, it'll tell me. Oh, let me go ahead and sort it. So you press this button right here to sort it. So in load order, and it'll actually tell you if you have any messages. So I don't have any dirty plugins. That's what that auto cleaner that I showed you earlier will, will take care of. I don't have any dirty plugins. Um, I don't have any errors. Um, but you, all of this will pop up. And this, this is basically my load order right here. It has 
everything like the the main Skyrim files and then the mods that you add after that and then it, but the the problem comes when you have incompatibilities between mods or if you have mods that are missing masters like if you have a mod that requires another mod but the other mod is not installed then you're going to typically run into some issues but the biggest challenge that I've run into personally is when mods have compatibility issues and you're required to like it and you'll get a notification I'm using Vortex but you'll get a notification saying hey uh, there's some some mods are redundant or these mods conflict with each other and you have to click on it and prioritize which mod that you want to be loaded first now if if you can choose but if you choose the wrong one it's still gonna load but you'll notice it in game something's off and if it, if it, if it is a, a big enough conflict then the whole game is just gonna crash for an example if like a script heavy mod like say weapon throw VR what from my experience weapon throw VR is extremely script heavy and if you have another combat related mod that also in um that also does something with weapons and it has and it has elements in that mod that conflicts with weapon throw VR since they're both so script heavy the game is just going to crash and also if you have if you don't have enough memory on your uh on your computer then Skyrim by its nature is just a fragile game anyway it's just prone to crashing but if you don't have enough memory then um it's it's just it's going to run out of space and i found different tweaks to increase your memory like adding um virtual memory and stuff like that and I'll, I'll try to keep creating these videos because I kind of feel like I'm all over the place with this. I'm hoping, uh, what I really want to talk about is just the each individual mod. But as I'm talking, I'm remembering stuff that I mentioned in the other video that I forgot to say. But let's just go down this list real quick. Let me just make kind of keep track of the time here because I'm recording on my main computer. Okay, so I just had to check the time real quick. I got about three minutes left. So I just want to go down these uh, each individual mods. So how I got to organize is the first thing I have is this, this VR guy compendium, just his reference. But let's go down tools. Now these are like the each individual tools, like the contract, the adaptive sharpening. I forgot what this is, forgot what this is, forgot what this is. And I forgot what this is. Uh, the main ones that I'm familiar with is engine fixes, VR tools, and um, script extender. I'm surprised I don't have that in there. But these are just like sky UI and stuff like that. I don't feel like I have everything in here. But I have them in my, my VR backup folder. So this is just easy access. Now, audio, I want to talk about brutal combat sounds and immersive sounds and sounds of Skyrim. I want to talk about this because um, this enhances the overall experience that you're having in Skyrim. Like This makes you sound like a, a, a straight savage when you hit somebody. You can really feel like, man, you're like really cutting them and you can you can feel it. You know, immersive sounds really enhances the overall audio of, of the game. Just like it's just like reverb and and um, an ambience overhaul. But this, the reason why I got both of them, I forgot. Let's see. Is dramatic and extensively customizable overhaul of Skyrim sounds. And then reverb and amb ambience overhaul, it does something else. What it does, it makes all sounds more realistic for players and PCs. It improves and balances ambience and reverb to more realistic and lively. So I found those two to really complement each other. And realistic dog sounds, I found that uh, the dogs are pretty repetitive. With their barking so you know i just want to kind of switch that up and um and mute the music the combat in the game I, i'm not trying to hear that combat music every time a wolf or a mud crab like approaches me you know so i i use that to just turn that off but it also gives you the option to um to mute anything else you, you anything else you have so i only got one minute left so let's try to rush through this real quick so combat and spells dual will block Use both hands to block. Locational damage. Hit hit them and it damages where you hit them. Spell will. It makes it so when you... It's just like a Half-Life Alex when you press the joystick, your, a will of your spells or whatever your favorites come up. But in this case, it won't be pressing the joystick. You can assign like a, a trigger. Spell Siphon completely enhances the magic of the game. And um, I'm actually going to do a whole playthrough just dedicated to Spell Siphon. Weapon Throw makes it so you can throw your weapon. Instant Equip makes it so... You, you know, you can equip faster because the crossbow is pretty slow. Rogue Toxin Dos Dox <laughs> This guy is pretty cool. I just added him as an enemy to the game. But you'll find that this guy, um, Mahel Monsters, he has a lot of different enemies and stuff that you can add. So I'm running out of time here. I won't be able to go through all this. But 
less aggressive animals, those wolves can be pretty annoying. Alright, I'm going to try to make another video.